let us all that we can to build a better future. I'm so glad to do this segment. It's been a while. I hope all of you are sitting down or got your surfboards ready, ready to give a little bit of a good old aloha. Shout out to former Congresswoman and now private citizen Tulsi Gabbard. That's right, it is a Tulsi time. Let's play this video because Tulsi Gabbard is acknowledging, hey, you know, why are we bombing Syria? Why are we doing this? Why are we there? Someone has to. Yes. All right. So uh, let's play this video. To hear that some of my former colleagues in Congress are speaking out against the recent unconstitutional airstrikes in Syria. But they're ignoring the bigger issue. The regime change war the United States continues to wage in Syria using Al-Qaeda, Al-Nusra, HTS terrorists as our proxy ground force and who now occupy and control the city of Idlib, imposing Sharia law and cleansing the area of most Christians and religious minorities. The Biden administration continues to use our military to illegally occupy northeastern Syria to, quote, take the oil, as Trump so crassly but honestly put it, violating international law. A modern day siege of draconian embargo and sanctions similar to what the Saudi-US alliance employed in Yemen is causing death and suffering for millions of innocent Syrians, depriving them of things like food, medicine, clean water, mm -hmm. energy, warmth, and making it impossible for the Syrian people to try to begin to rebuild their war-torn country. Okay, so I want to acknowledge something here real quick. Again, a great video, but you know, again, as a citizen, uh, you know, she, she's she's not in Congress anymore. But again, I want to point something out. AOC has yet, yeah, yet to really make a statement on Syria. So a very few. Now, again, there have been some lawmakers acknowledging this here and there. But again, we have the resources to go to war. I want to pull up this article from Mint Press News. This came out on February 26 uh, of last month, because now we're in March. Um, Washington. Barely a month into his presidency, Joe Biden launched an airstrike on Syria yesterday. The attack was reportedly aimed at militias close to the Iraqi border, killing 22 people, considerably more than the White House first claimed in the attack. 1.7 tons of bombs were dropped on a small border crossing village, according to the New York Times. Now, again, seeing as how our smart bombs aren't always that smart and there's always collateral damage, I have more questions about what happened to that village. Was it abandoned? Was it a location? Was it a hub for terrorists? Or was it an innocent village that was bombed by the United States military? Well, we military? know the United States is always completely accurate with a 90% da Daniel, 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 got to stop you there. We're, 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 we're not on Stargate. Oh, right. A different alter alternative. I love right. that universe. Yeah. I really do. Wait, wait, where were we bringing Stargate? Yeah, it's, uh, well, it's a Stargate. Well, see, the thing is, Stargate, like they, yeah. like, like the military. Oh, yeah, they always are, do everything right. They always do everything yeah, right. Okay, yes, because because okay. one, they got yeah, MacGyver. Yeah, 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 yeah. They got MacGyver there with them yeah, too. Yeah. So everything's done right. What you're saying now. <laughs> yeah, no, the U.S. Is always gets it right. We only kill ninety percent of the civilians when we target things with yes. our bombs. Um, and it's like you know, it's 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 a real shame that like Tulsi is in a sense. It's it's a shame and it isn't. You'll get what I mean in a second that she, Tulsi is as relevant as she is. It's just like there aren't that many Democrats who are also like, hey, can we like not blow people up overseas? Mm -hmm. It's it's such a weird thing that like to this day, it's like Tulsi's not in office anymore. And she's still like, well, OK, uh, let's go to the person who has probably the better foreign policy take out there. And it's someone who's not even in office anymore. It's a real disgrace that in a sense she can we can talk about her still mm. and it's and no one can really say yeah but there's another person that's talking about what she's talking about more than no 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 it's it's sort of just Tulsi yeah. on this specific amount of hey let's not blow up other people and their countries and I, take and, over and, their oil and and, and and the thing is and the thing is too Syria again it's a country that's allied with Russia and heaven forbid one day one of our American drones or pilots or helicopter pilots accidentally shoots or blows up a Russian convoy because I don't know what the fallout of that will be but I'm pretty sure it won't be pretty so long as there's with all the mushroom clouds in the skies so I want to just continue on with this article it was commonly reported that the target of the raid was pro-Iranian forces 
members, spe- specifically members of the Popular Mobilization Front, a By contingent of Iraqi militia groups formed to fight ISIS that were eventually brought under the command of I- Iraqi government. In its headline, the Times described the militias as such, although in the body of its report, uh, the paper admitted that it had no evidence and was not sure this was the case. So again, I urge you... Oh, so it's like they, they bombed the place on a parliamentarian order. Right. So again, I want everyone to look at this article in its full entirety. It's available in our show notes in the description box below. But, you know, just because I, I want to focus on, I want to just bring it, bring it to a different subject. Yeah. Ignoring Tulsi, ignoring this entire uh, the bombing that happened. The American population right now, there are people still being evicted from their homes. There are still people being evicted from their apartments. People are still being laid off from their jobs. We're still waiting for our stimulus check. We're the only developed country that doesn't have a continuous universal basic income or a temporary universal basic income at this point. We don't have Medicare for all. We have student debt. We have medical debt. Our infrastructure is clump- uh, falling apart. Flint, Michigan still does not have still does not have clean drinking water. The people of Texas are now only barely getting their industry and energy recovered. I mean, again, there are still reports of people just struggling. And see, the thing is. Flint, Michigan, Michigan State, Texas, but every other state has its own fair share of problems. This is not how a world superpower should be treating its people. And yet we have time to go to war and bomb villages that are not part of our republic, that are not part of our democracy. But yet we have time to do that. But we don't have time to take care of the average citizen who is right now struggling. Again, lack of education. So much stuff is falling apart here. And yet... Our politicians are running on feel-good statements to make us all feel warm inside. But see, they're using words, not actions. I want to see well, deeds taking place, not statements. You I, Look, I could type something on Twitter that maybe our audience will agree. But see, the thing is, follow-through. You want to know what an example of a follow-through was? Forced to vote. The movement for it. And there were people in Washington, D.C. protesting for forced to vote. People like Nico House. There was the Convo Couch crew mm-hmm. that was there. Jackson Hinkle, uh, uh, Frank Analysis, uh, and not to mention there were people standing in solidarity with them too and actually bringing more awareness of why we need to have Medicare for all, why we need to force the vote for Medicare for all, right? Yeah. There were people following through, but silence from our lawmakers. And again, AOC's silence on the bombing of Syria right now is very depressing. But if you rewind back the clocks to 2018 and even 2020 when Trump was still president, AOC was still speaking. Uh, like she was saying, I oh, we, 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 we can't do this. point out this other thing that's, incredibly stupid on top of everything we've already discussed. According to the Biden administration, we're trying to get Iran to comply coming back into the the deal we made under Obama, which again, one of the things that Obama did that I really did like, one of the things that Trump did that I really did not like. Turns out when Biden says he's going to continue, he means what Trump's doing. Because he knows that Trump imposed an enormous amount of sanctions on Iran when we broke the deal. And he's still asking for the exact same thing Trump is asking for when he knows that they can negotiate it away and pay a fine, which they really should. Uh, which is to say, we're going to unilaterally pull our sanctions back because they shouldn't be on you to begin with. And then we'll talk again and we'll open discussions because these sanctions should have never been on you. You followed the aspect of the deal, but that's not what's happening. And so to push Iran to try and get back on the plate, get back, one of the first things that he does is blows up people that he says are connected with Iran, regardless or not if they actually exist. This is stupidity. And it's so sad uh, that... Like when we talk about, like when people say blue no matter who, oh, Biden's not as bad as Trump. It's such a devastating thing that if we're right and he is as bad or worse than Trump, we lose. We have no winning situation when these things happen. It's absolutely disgusting. And then we have people who claim to be progressive who don't care. And the only person that at least I've seen in the last like eight years who I believed when they said that they did not want to go to war, was destroyed by their own party for holding that stance and and uh, uh, going with Bernie Sanders. And their misdeeds were exaggerated, attacked, exploited in a way that if they had remained in the in club and, for example, Tulsi hadn't left in 2016 to go for Bernie, they would have said that she's amazing and we need Asian. She would be in the same position Kamala's in, maybe not in, in specific being VP, 
but it doesn't matter. The things that people don't like about Tulsi wouldn't really exist as common conversation points if they had not been put out by the Democratic Party to start with. And that's the shame is that someone who's trying, you know, whatever you think on any of the other issues, just on foreign policy, she has been right. And it's so disgusting that it's so few people and it's really just her. Uh, allow me to correct myself. This is from Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Here's a profound danger of what we did in Syria. A mad king president with majority disapproval of Americans. This is an abomination without constitutional requirement of Congress congressional approval. Democrats who take war money pass the laws allowing that. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. This was at 1036 a.m. on April 14th, 2018. I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me just double check her Twitter. Hold on. Hold on. Um, she has a tweet of pay your interns $15 an hour. Okay. Well, at least you're paying your interns. Um, and that's about it. Nothing on Syria. Nothing about bombing Syria. Uh, AOC, you got that same kind of energy to say to, uh, Joe, or is it just going to be up to private citizens and independent media, uh, to just really call out the hypocrisy of our government? 